So in this video, we're going to look at some ways of keeping score. So I have a App Inventor file that I have set up with a canvas and a ball. And then I have a table arrangement set up at the bottom for an area where we're going to keep score and where we'll later on keep track of levels. And I also have a image here that I'm just using as a spacer. So um, this is a table arrangement and without this spacer in here this text was just kind of all running over together. So that's just kind of a trick to use to get things to lay out. So the way uh, the code is set up for this project file so far is that when the screen initializes we're setting the ball to a random, or the heading to a random integer between 1 and 360, so anywhere in a circle. And then we're setting the ball speed to 10, just to have it play nice and slow on the screen when it demos. And I also have it set up so when the ball reaches the edge, it's going to bounce off. So when we load the app, and test it out on a device, here is what it looks like. Right, so we have the ball just bouncing around off of the edges. And that's all it does so far. So there are some different ways that we can keep score. So in this example, let's keep score every time we are able to tap the red ball. So when we can touch a sprite, we can change the score. So if I go back into App Inventor, what we'll do is create a variable to hold our score. So I'm going to create a new global variable and I'm just going to call it score since that's what it's going to save. And I'll start it at zero since uh, most times when you start a game, you're starting off at zero. So the next thing you want to think about is, okay, when do we want to change score? Right, we can change score by setting score to whatever the current score is plus or minus another value. So let's just say um, every time we tap the ball, we want to get 10 points. So we're going to set score to whatever it currently is, so we get score. So get the value plus 10. And when we're finished, we want to put that into the label, right? I already have a label set up over here called score label. So if I come over here and grab a set score label text to, and that should be the value of score. So we need a get score block. So this will change, this will add 10 to the score and put it into the label. But now where do we want to put this? Like what is going to initiate or be the event that triggers changing the score. Well, in this case, it's when we touch the ball. So if we go into ball one, we can look. Now these are events of what the ball will do or um, when the ball collides, edge reached, when it's flung. So here's touched, right? When the ball is touched, So when the ball is touched, change the score and put it into the label. So let's test that out. So now if I just tap it, you can see that I tapped it and it's changing the score down here, but I lost where it said it started out with I click on this, it started out with score colon zero. But when I tapped it, it just changed to the number. 
So there's a couple of ways that you could fix that. We could add another label over here and then just change this to zero. But I can show you a way that we can do that without adding a second label. So if I come over into my blocks mode, I want to set score label text to, and all I have to do here is I'm going to slide this out and I'm going to use a text join. So if I come in here, there is a join where we can kind of blend multiple pieces together. So what I want to do is join, and I need a text block in here to say score colon, and I'm going to put a space in there, so then there'll be a space and then it will plug in the value of score. So now if I come back here and I test this and I start tapping the ball, you can see that my score word and colon are staying there and my score is increasing. So let's look at some other ways to keep score. What about if we wanted to recognize when an edge is reached? So maybe when the ball hits the bottom edge of the screen, then we could uh, change the score then. So let's come back here. So instead of when the ball is touched, we want to change the score when the edge is reached. So if I take this and I pull it over in here, so this will bounce it off the edge and then change the score. So you know what, I'm going to make a reset button so that I can just reset the score back again. And so I'm going to grab a button over here and I need to make another column in my table. So let's make it five columns. That way I'll have a little space in between there and then I'll put this all the way at the end and let's call it reset and then over here when we click reset we want to change the score back to zero and then put that into the score label so let's set score to zero And we want to set the label to and let me move ball touched out of the way here. So we'll set the score label text to whatever score is again. So now if I come back out here, I should be able to oh, let me change the text on my button. And we'll call this reset and then I'll tap my reset button and now my score goes back to zero and now you can see it hit the bottom edge and it went up by 10 the left edge the top and the right so for each edge that it's hitting the score is going up now if we wanted to just figure out one edge the bottom or the right etc we can do that in our code. So let's come back here into the code blocks. And each edge is numbered. So the top edge is 1, the bottom edge is negative 1, the right edge is 3, the left edge is negative 3. So if we wanted to see when it hits the bottom edge, we want to see if edge is equal to negative 1. So if I come back here and say edge reached, App Inventor recognizes the edge that's hit and that's stored in this variable called edge. So since we only want to change the score if it's the bottom edge, then we just use an if block to say if we want to say edge is equal to, so we'll say if 
get edge. So if edge is equal to, and the bottom is negative one. So I just need a number block here. So if edge is equal to negative one, then change the score. So let me go back out to my app and I'm going to reset it. And so now it's going to hit the left edge, the top edge. And then if it hits the bottom edge, now it went up by 10. So now it's only changing the score when it's hitting the bottom edge. Okay, so back to our code. So what if I wanted to recognize when two objects collide and then change the score? So I just uploaded an image. So you can take any small image and upload it into your project. And I'm going to switch over to the designer view. And since we're working on the drawing and animation or on the canvas, we have to use an image sprite, right? We can't come in here and drag an image onto the canvas, right? It puts it, it pushes it outside of there. So um, in order to work with something on the canvas, it has to be an image sprite from the drawing and animation palette. So I'm gonna pull over an image sprite here and I'm going to set it to my fly. And then I'm going to come over into my blocks mode and uh, I'm going to do the same thing to move the fly around on the screen. So in my screen initialize, let me move this around. I'm just going to duplicate the ball. And instead I'm, oops, that's right. Can't use the ball because it's a different type of component. So image sprite one let me come back over here and name this to fly sprite always good to name it what it is so it makes more sense in your code so the fly sprite i want to set fly sprite speed and i want to set fly sprite heading and I can at least reuse these pieces. Okay. So now when it loads, I probably have to push this back over since this is in screen initialize. Oh. Yeah, it shows up here, but it's not animating, so. I find a quick way sometimes to have it reset rather than coming back in and reconnecting is I just come to screen one and turn, um, turn something off, like show status bar off and then back on again. And then I come back over here and now it's there but it hits an edge and it stops. So I need to update that to set up to bounce as well. So when fly sprite edge reached, then we'll say fly sprite bounce edge. Got an error in there because it didn't let, give me enough time to put this over here. <laughs> So let me move this around a little bit to make it so we have our newer code in here. So let's see what it's doing on the screen. So now it looks like the fly is bouncing around. And what we'd like to do is maybe when those two collide, get some points. So I'm going to move this up off of the screen again. Now we don't want to get points when the fly sprite reaches the edge. We want when these two things collide. So I can come in and 
I can say if the ball collides with something, change the score. Or I can say when the fly collides with something to change the score. In this case, the only other things that they can collide with are each other. So it wouldn't make any difference which one I choose. So I'm just going to go with the fly sprite and let's say when the fly sprite collided with and what it's colliding with is stored as other so if we did have multiple other things we can always check to see what it was that it collided with. So when the fly sprite collided with what do we want it to do? Well, I'm just going to change the score here and pull it into this. And I'm just going to get rid of this if-then block because we're just moving on to a different style of when we're keeping score. So when the fly sprite collided with other, in this case anything else, then we're going to change the score. So let's go back and reset and wait for those two to collide and then the score did go up there. And we don't have anything else in here that controls the movement of those two, like a fling event. So it's just by coincidence that they're going to collide. But I can see that that score is working. So there often is the question about, okay, there's something else that it's going to collide with and we don't want to take away points. We only want it to or add points, we only want it to do that when these specific two items collide. So how can we do something like that? Let's go back here and I'm going to add another image sprite and I'm going to upload another image. So I uploaded a spider image and I'm just going to change my picture on here to the spider. So I'm not going to take the time to make it move around, but what we can do is check to see when one of these, like when the fly specifically collides with the spider, uh, to have something happen. So in here we have when the fly collides with other. It's automatically adding 10 to the score. But what if we only wanted it to add 10 to the score when it collides with the spider? So again, using our conditional if. So if other is equal to Now before we were saying a number for the edge, here we want to check for a specific sprite that it's colliding with. So, um, oh, I didn't rename my image. I do like to keep that in there, so I'll call it spider sprite. So now I want it to say spider sprite. So if I select spider sprite, all the way at the bottom of these properties is the block for spider sprite, which is just referring to the actual component. So if other was the spider sprite, then change the score. So let's go out and reset the score and see what happens when, yep, the spider and the fly collide, but it doesn't change when the fly and the ball collide. Right? And it didn't change when the ball collided with the spider. So in here, we can be specific about which sprite it actually collided with and then changed the score based on that.